once roaming freely across the southeastern United States, the red wolf is now on the brink of disappearing forever. Today, less than 20 of these amazing creatures survive in the wild. But how did it come to this? And is the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the very agency tasked with protecting them, is, are they part of the problem? Let's dive into the messy, heartbreaking, but hopeful story of America's most endangered canid. Red wolves, Canis rufus, once thrived from Texas to Missouri, Florida to New Jersey, but by the 1960s, they were on the verge of extinction. Victims of habitat destruction, predator eradication programs, and conflicts with humans. By 1980, the red wolf was declared extinct in the wild. But the story didn't end there. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service launched a bold recovery effort capturing the last remaining wolves and starting a captive breeding program. In 1987, hope was reignited as red wolves were reintroduced into the wild in northeastern North Carolina. If you're familiar with Yellowstone, the red wolf reintroduction actually predates Yellowstone, but it's not talked about much because it was a failure. So for red wolves, things looked promising. By 2012, the population had grown to about 120 wolves. But just as quickly as they bounced back, disaster struck. After its peak, the population plummeted, and as of 2024, the wild population is estimated to be 16 individuals. There are a few captive breeding facilities across the U.S., some associated with zoos, where there's a total population of around 250 captive red wolves. The wild red wolf does not currently have a self-sustaining, resilient population and cannot become resilient without intervention. So what went wrong? The same agency that brought red wolves back started making decisions that would push them to the edge again. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's biggest mistake? Ignoring the people. Early planning left out local communities, hunters, and landowners. The very folks sharing the landscape with these wolves. This oversight created deep distrust. Social and political aspects were excluded from initial management decisions, leading to a rift in stakeholder involvement. And when people don't feel heard, they push back. Poaching rates soared, driven by negative attitudes towards wolves. Studies show that over 50% of red wolf deaths are due to illegal killings. And, and get this, in a local survey, some people admitted they'd shoot a wolf on sight, no matter the law, no matter the circumstances. Even efforts to distinguish wolves from coyotes, like bright orange collars, haven't been enough. Today, the challenges are mounting. Road mortality is a huge threat. 15 to 21% of red wolf deaths are from vehicle strikes. Imagine fighting for survival only to be struck down by a passing car. And then there's hybridization with coyotes. Thanks to year-round coyote hunting in the recovery area, red wolves are often mistaken for their smaller cousins. Plus, reduced wolf populations means more chances for coyotes to move in and mix things up genetically. But here's the kicker. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service knows this, but their policies haven't adapted fast enough. And the wolves, they're paying the price. 
If you're interested in hearing a longer deep dive on the history of red wolves, let me know in the comments below. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has been reintroducing red wolves back into the wild since 2020 in order, in order to increase the population, but the wolves aren't surviving. If they're not found dead, they're being removed by U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for overutilizing the agricultural lands that are directly adjacent to their recovery area instead of hunting at the wildlife refuge which makes sense. It's an active agricultural area, so there are lots of small rodents, lots of easy game. Of course, they're going to go where it's easier to find food. But why should we care about saving red wolves? That It's not just about one species. It's the, about the health of entire ecosystems. Red wolves are apex predators. They help control populations and the behavior of deer and smaller mammals, preventing overgrazing and helping forests regenerate. Their presence even affects riverbanks, reducing erosion, improving water quality, and changing community structure. They also help control disease by preying on weak sick animals, reducing the spread of zoonotic diseases to humans and livestock. They literally have a sanitation effect on their prey populations. That's right, wolves actually help make us healthier. Now, let's talk money, because conservation isn't, isn't just about biology, it's about economics too. Sure, hunters and livestock producers face real cost, but the benefits of red wolves, they're massive and often overlooked. Think ecotourism. Places like Yellowstone and Vancouver Island rake in millions of dollars from wolf watching tours. Even in North Carolina, there's untapped potential. And here's something wild. In Wisconsin, the return of wolves led to a 24% reduction in deer vehicle collisions, saving millions in property damage and personal health care costs. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Pray for the Pack program compensates landowners for wolf-friendly practices. But what about local businesses? Incentivizing community involvement could help create a win-win scenario, saving wolves while boosting the local economy. Despite everything, there's hope. In 2024, nine endangered red wolf pups were born between the St. Louis Zoo and Point Defiance Zoo. A small but mighty victory. The North Carolina Wildlife Federation invested $25 million in wildlife crossings to protect animals from traffic, including red wolves. And in a groundbreaking move, the Cherokee Nation is now involved in recovery efforts, bringing invaluable traditional ecological knowledge and community support. Change is happening, slowly, but it's happening. So how do we save the red wolf? It starts with holding U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service accountable, demanding better management, and maybe finding a better location for a reintroduced population. We should focus on connecting wildlife habitat with corridors, reduce road deaths with wildlife crossings, and foster genuine community discussion and involvement. It's about shifting from reactive policies to proactive solutions. The red wolf survival hangs in the balance, but with resilience, collaboration, and a fierce commitment to doing better, we can ensure this incredible species doesn't vanish from our wild landscapes. The fight isn't over. Coyotes with high red wolf DNA 
were recently found in Louisiana, leading some researchers to wonder if there's maybe a small forgotten red wolf population out there. If you're as fired up as I am about wolves, hit that like button, subscribe for more wildlife content, and share this video to spread awareness.